G'day YouTube, welcome back. Happy New Year to everyone as well. Uh, it's the first, obviously, here in Australia. Had a pretty good New Year's Eve last night, hanging out with a few friends, having a few drinks. Uh, nothing sort of too crazy. Uh, you know, we've got sort of COVID issues here in Australia, uh, particularly in New South Wales. Uh, in Victoria they're having a few issues with that at the moment and that's really sad and disappointing for them but the rest of us are still trying to f abide by you know rules where there's not too many people around so it was just a small gathering uh, but I had a great time anyway <laughs> feeling a little bit under the weather at the moment but not too bad I didn't write myself off just had a good time and look I hope wherever you are around the world you're having uh, you know a great New Year's Eve or New Year's Day and if it's not a completely great one uh, because of you know COVID and all the rest of it hopefully it's still a somewhat enjoyable one and you're able to spend it with some family or some friends and things like that but all right moving on from that so a Bitcoin ETF this has been spoken about for such a long time uh, and there is a belief that if an ETF finally comes into play for Bitcoin uh, that it will automatically add a substantial amount of money uh, to uh, Bitcoin straight away. I think Raoul Paul came out and said that he thought that it had add $5 billion uh, to the Bitcoin uh, itself uh, as soon as one come out. Now, Van Eck is who have put forward an ETF. Look, they've put it through a number of ETFs and they've all been knocked back. So it'll be interesting to see if this one will finally go through. They have put a lot more work and effort into it uh, and the, the bid that they're put through seems to be... Uh, you know fairly complete and comprehensive but we'll just have to wait and see the sec may still knock it back you know time will tell but let's read on so a bitcoin etf operated by van eck would follow the path of gold trust etfs in that it would physically hold underlying bitcoin according to the filing the van eck bitcoin trust would reflect the performance of the mvis crypto compare bitcoin benchmark rate Wall Street has been attempting to launch a Bitcoin ETF for years and Van Eck itself has had its last proposal rejected in September 2017. But now, with a changing of the guard of the SEC and a surge in Bitcoin prices to new all-time highs, in part driven by increased adoption from in, uh, institutions, the chance of approval could be higher than ever. And look, we just have to you know, keep our fingers crossed and hope that's true. Jay Clayton, who opposed the launch of the Bitcoin ETF during his tenure, stepped down as chairman of the SEC earlier this month, and Treasury Secretary Steve Mnuchin, who has not been receptive to Bitcoin, will be replaced by uh, Jeanette Yellen uh, next month. Bitcoin is up nearly 300% year-to-date, and big-name Wall Street institutions are starting to warm to the cryptocurrency. Mass Mutual acquired $100 million worth of Bitcoin earlier this month, and high-profile investors like Paul Tudor Jones and Stanley Druckenmiller have also gotten on board. So this is really what we sort of need. An ETF uh, will really help to kind of legitimise it, but a number of them have sort of been put forward uh, and they haven't eventuated, which has been really sad. So fingers crossed the SEC uh, is, you know, going to be smiling down on this uh, <laughs> new Van Eck ETF uh, and we'll see what happens. You know, it's a new year, you know, anything can happen and hopefully it's going to be something good all right now i did report on this yesterday and it seems it was inaccurate so it seems grayscale didn't uh, liquidate massive amounts of xrp and xlm uh look i only provide you with the information that uh, i get and i find off the net so i got this from coin telegraph and uh they were wrong and they're admitting they're wrong so that means i was wrong as well uh and at the moment i am really <laughs> sort of kicking myself i sold uh, my xrp or at least the majority of it for almost the absolute bottom and now it's uh jumped up some but you know we'll have to see whether that holds this could just be a short pump before it dumps even further but i'll read here uh sorry grayscale spokesman spokesperson confirmed to toy coin telegraph <laughs> that the fund manager didn't dump massive stakes of xrp and xlm so it says here none of the grayscale investment products operate a redemption program the net holdings of our investment products only change as a result of inflows from the private placement price of underlying assets and a cured management fee statements about large sales of underlying assets by many of our investment products are false and inaccurate any perceived large decrease in the USD value of the Grayscale XRP Trust would have been a result of a decrease in the USD price of XRP. So it seems they haven't actually gone ahead and dumped it. So, 
if they're holding, maybe it's a good idea to hold. You know, for me, I think I'm just still going to wait uh, and, you know, just see what happens. Uh, I still have some XRP, uh, but yeah, I sold, I'd say nearly 85 to 90% of my XRP. And it seems at the moment I've sold at the bottom. So if I want to buy back in, uh, I'm going to, uh, yeah, I'll have lost there. But anyway, time will tell. All right, let's go over here. We'll have to refresh this. So 780 billion, getting oh so close to that 800 billion and the 880 billion that we were back at the peak of 2017. So that's what's crazy at the moment. We're not even at the peak of the 2017 uh, total market cap. So that's still got a long way to go. And just look at the prices of some of these things. All right, let's have a bit of a refresh and see what changes. So 780, 777, all right there, it's starting to go down. It is Friday, uh, you know, traditional pullback over the weekend. Will we see it? Uh, time will have to tell. But gas prices, 46, so that's not really great. BTC dominance still sitting around 70%, and I think it's gonna uh, sort of stay around there for a while at the moment. I don't see it really changing. Uh, it might even uh, go up, particularly if um, an ETF comes out. If an ETF comes out, I think you'll see a lot more pour into Bitcoin uh, and that dominance could rise uh, quite sharply. All right, what are the big movers though? We can see Bitcoin's having a bit of a retracement here and look, after a 22% rise in uh, seven days, that's probably to be expected. Uh, and we just can't seem to crack that $30,000 mark at the moment. You know, there's obviously some selling pressure there, but there's buying pressure as well because it's getting bought up even though it's being sold off before it gets to 30000 you know, it's now, you know, sitting in the $29,000 range uh, quite sort of comfortably. Well, I won't say comfortably, but more often than not, it's, you know, low 29s, high 28s. You know, we're not seeing 27s and things like that really at the moment. So, you know, this could go higher or maybe, you know, that big retracement that everyone's expecting could happen. I don't know. Look, I, I again, I've said I thought it would happen between 25000 and 35000 so if we round it off, really that's 30,000. So somewhere around about here is where I would expect to see at least a sort of 15 to maybe 20, 25% retracement. Look, it could be more as well. It could go, you know, 30, 40%. But time will tell, we'll have to wait and see. All right, and we can see XRP, it was up 6.1% uh, over 24 hours. It's already dropped 2%. So again, has it found its bottom or has it got more legs to go down? We'll have to wait and see. But have a look at this polka dot, seven days up 80% uh, and up 11.5% uh, in the last 24 hours. But here we are seeing a retracement. With a with a pump like that, I do expect to see polka dot uh, have a, a reasonable sort of correction over the next few days. It's, look, it's not to say it can't go higher. This could go up 100 something percent. Uh, this is just a short pullback over this hour, but at some stage, again, I would expect that there's gonna be a heavy uh, pullback. So I have some money on the sides and I am looking to increase my uh, polka dot. I just finally got all my staking and stuff sorted out for polka dot today. Uh, so I'm pretty happy with that. All right, uh, and Cardano has done pretty well. Uh, moving along, I'm real happy. Uh, again, I've staked uh, my Cardano as well. Uh, really any coins that you're interested in that can be staked uh, you know my personal recommendation not financial advice uh, is you know put them to work get them to stake uh, but again make sure you understand how to do it you know there's plenty of YouTube tutorials and uh, uh, you know vlogs and all, all the rest of it you know written documents that explain exactly how to do it all right let's have a look 24 hours what's the big movers what's really moved well, Horizons had a pretty good uh, week, uh, and it looks like it's just continuing to go. NEM is finally making some pullbacks. It got fairly high and then really pulled back, so I might have to look into NEM. Uh, that was rated uh, reasonably high anyway on uh, token metrics, and I do use token metrics. Uh, I'm quite fond of the site. Uh, it's got lots of good information, and I will put a uh, referral link down below for anyone who's interested in getting into token uh, metrics. Uh, again, I recommend the site, but that's not financial advice. That's my personal opinion. All right, have a look at NEAR. God, this has been on a rocket ship. Just keeps going up and up and up, but again, when things go up like that, chances are there's gonna be a retracement. 
But what we can see here is some good double digit moves, like, you know, 20%, oh, that's pretty good, nearly 20%, 15%, 14%, 10%, you know what I mean? Some really good ones. And then just lots of good single digit uh, moves as well. Filecoin may have finally found a bottom, uh, you know, I feel sorry for the people that bought into Filecoin really early. Uh, they probably hurt for a while. Uh, and Sushi Coin again, just, you know, keeps moving, but it was uh, taken into, uh, what is it, Yearn Finance and all the rest of it adopted it. And Algorand, uh, happy with Algorand. Look, a lot of projects move pretty well. But what about losers? Has there been any big losers in the last 24 hours anyway? All right, look, there has, but nothing really big. I mean, basic share, again, they're up, you know, nearly 100% over seven days. So, of course, they were going to have a pullback but it seems that they're already uh, bounced back from that. We can see over here. So maybe it continues to go higher. Ample fourth, 10%. Again, they're still up 40% for seven days, so they're not doing too bad. Uh, empty set dollar, uh, not doing so well. It's at 88 cents. Uh, I'm not sure how that works when it's supposed to be a dollar. Uh, but anyway, I don't know enough about empty set dollar to say too much. Tether's tether. Uh, again, it just kind of sits around that uh, same range all the time. Compound waves. Look, these are all really low single digit uh, sort of losses. So anyone who's in those probably isn't too worried. And again, like Synthetics Network, uh, I am yeah, considering buying some more Synthetics Network. I'm just going to have to wait and see uh, where the market goes. You know, I, yeah, I'll just have to wait and see. Anyway, all right. What I want to do is go over and have a look at DOT and we can see how DOT has been doing. And this is against Bitcoin. So we can see uh, quite early on it did really, really well. And then just for a long time. So what's the date here? Since the 3rd of September, it has just been getting absolutely monstered by Bitcoin. And look, even its dollar value was going down. Uh, down and down and down and down. And then here we've just had this uh, nice move. Now we can go over to .usd and we'll see uh, how it's done. Again, it was way up here. At some stage, look back on the 18th of August, it was valued at $50 uh, and then dropped all the way down to, what was its lowest? There we go, $2.71. So I think I bought somewhere up around about sort of here. It was like $5, I think. And that might have even been Australian. Uh, so yeah, I probably bought over here somewhere, I'd say. Uh, and I just watched it go down. It didn't, wasn't down by a whole lot, uh, but now it is finally uh, into profit for me. And I am sort of hoping that there's going to be a bit more of a pullback from here uh, and I will buy some more DOT. But again, we'll just have to wait and see. I'm not rushing into anything at the moment. But DOT finally making some moves. You know, there's a lot of hype about it. But that's all it is at the moment. Uh, it's just hype and, you know, a lot of speculation, which is the same with a lot of cryptos. But, you know, Bitcoin's been around for a while. I don't think there's hype and speculation around that. Litecoin uh, has a few detractors out there, but it's, it's you know, it's basically Bitcoin, uh, but faster uh, and there's more of them. Uh, it's got some upsides to it, but it is also a test network sort of, not so much uh Litecoin being a test network, but they do a lot of testing for stuff. And once it's uh, proven and all the rest of it, it goes onto the uh, Litecoin network, uh, such as things like uh, Lightning Network and that, and then it moves over to the uh, Bitcoin network later. So uh, I'm a fan of Litecoin, but anyway, I'm not on uh, the Litecoin chart here. So this is Polkadot. Right, last but not least. least. Last but not least is what I'm trying to spit out there. All right, Bitcoin. As I said, it's just been, yeah, it just keeps going. It just literally keeps going. Uh, the more it keeps going like this, the more I can't help it. Uh, and I'm sure most people are the same. I just think there's going to be a big correction at some stage. But look, it may be a long way away. It might not be till 40, 50,000 that we see a big correction. It may not be till even much, much later. We just really don't know. We keep hearing stories about institutions getting into Bitcoin and, you know, there's an ETF coming out and, you know, there's all this other news. And again, the institutions that are in at the moment, they're just the early adopters. They're not the biggest of them all. The biggest uh, is just the general kind of institutions, not the early first movers. Again, you know, a lot of institutions, when they want to buy Bitcoin, they have to go through Grayscale. That's the only way they can own Bitcoin. So this is just early companies getting into the Bitcoin trust. Uh, you know, 
there'll still be the other ones that will FOMO in much later. So could this price pull back? And could it pull back 20, 30, 40%? Could, yeah, I think it could. But do I think it's going to do that? I just can't see it at the moment. Uh, I just uh, There hasn't been anything that has made me think that's going to happen just yet. There's just constant stories about another big company buying more Bitcoin and another big company buying more Bitcoin. And if they've all been buying it, let's roughly say around kind of the $20,000 mark, because that's where a lot of companies have been getting in, let's say fifteen to 20000 they're not looking to sell at the moment. Why would they? They haven't even doubled their money yet. Maybe the $15,000 uh, people, but again, MicroStrategy was buying it. I think their average price ended up being uh, $15,000 or $19,000 or something. They were buying it at $21,000. So again, if they're still buying it, they're not going to be selling anytime soon. You know, I'm sure their liquidity is just fine, and uh, you know the other big companies and that really the selling pressure at the moment would be coming from the miners. They always sell. That's just how it works. So they'll continue to sell no matter what the price is. But as the price continues to go up and up and up, they can sell a little bit less. They don't need to sell as much. They still like to hold on to, you know, moon bags as they say, and they'll wait for certain prices and then just really start to, you know, increase the sell pressure. But outside of them, I don't think there's too many people selling. I, I, you know, the whales and that that are getting in, I don't think they're looking to, you know, just make kind of a 15, 16, 17% return. Oh, don't get me wrong, I'm not saying they wouldn't sell any of their Bitcoin for that kind of price if they needed to remain liquid. But I would say the majority of their holdings, they're looking for at least sort of, you know, two, three extra returns, if not even more. And maybe they've, you know, done their research and people have talked about there being a two, excuse me, a $200,000 Bitcoin. So if they've bought in at, let's say, 25000 they're not looking at selling anytime soon. All right, happy new year to those who are out there. Hit that like button down below and subscribe button. I put out daily content. Uh, you know, I try and make it as interesting as I can and I look for the latest uh, things that are happening and I give you my perspective. Uh, I've been in this uh, space for a few years now. I don't claim to be an expert but I do uh, think that I have uh, a reasonable understanding uh, and hopefully you like my stuff and you like what I talk about. Leave a comment down below if there's something you'd like me to cover, uh, something uh, you think I could do better. I'm always open to uh, constructive criticism. Don't just get on there and hammer me and tell me I suck and don't tell me why I suck though. <laughs> all right, stay safe, be kind to one another. Hopefully you're all on that game train and I'll see you next time.